Hi, this is Tim Weber, your instructor. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the Mr. Poster, Mystery Poster presentation. Yeah, I try to say that fast. Um, here are the instructions. First of all, the assignment will have five parts. You'll put together a draft of the assignment. Then you'll create a poster, give a talk. You'll give a poster session handout to each of your classmates and then you will be identifying the mystery disorders being uh, presented by others in the class. So a little information on each of these. Uh, first of all, you'll be assigned one of the disorders that um, will be given out at class. So if you don't have one yet, talk to me and I'll assign one to you. First of all, you'll put together a draft of the information that you're going to be presenting on your poster and in your talk about that disorder. The draft will need to be organized in a coherent way. In fact, you might want to just organize all the information into the categories that you're going to use on the poster. You'll bring that to class on the day that I've given you, uh, that I've set for that. Um, you should have heard about that if you've been at class, otherwise check on the date you need to bring it to class. At class then, uh, your classmates, uh, I'll put you in some groups, and you can look over each other's uh, drafts to see is there missing information, uh, is there potentially too much information or too little, and so forth. One thing that I should mention though, uh, the disorder that you're going to present on is to be kept a secret. So on your draft, wherever the name of the disorder would go, uh, come up with some way to indicate that that's the disorder without actually naming it. Maybe you want to put a question mark, a uh, question mark disorder or something like that. Uh, that way you don't reveal what it is to your classmates you will receive a grade on that draft so make sure that you get it done so that you can uh, get a good start on the on the, uh, the assignment. Uh, the second part of the assignment is creating a poster to contain that information. The content of the, uh, the poster is important, the information contained there. Strive to be accurate and thorough that'll help your classmates identify the disorder that you're presenting accurate and complete information will yield more points as well. Information that's demonstrably inaccurate, be shown to be uh, incorrect, will support, subtract points from your total. So look for reliable sources of information. I will give you some help with that. I'm posting a few websites that will be helpful to you on Blackboard. Use those. That will help you. Of course, the information from your textbook is pretty reliable as well. So what kind of information content needs to be on the poster? First of all, the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for that disorder. What's that? Well, DSM-5 is Diagnostic and Statistical Manual Mental Disorders. And there will be a list of particular behaviors that can be observed that would indicate whether a person has that disorder. When you list the diagnostic criteria for your disorder, you'll need to summarize and use keywords to represent each of those items. Uh, many times it's presented in sentence form and it's going to be too long to put all of it onto the poster. Secondly, you'll give information about the prevalence of the disorder. How common is it? What percentage of the population suffers from this? Uh, is there a particular age group that it's more prevalent in? Uh, is this something that's more common in males or females or certain cultural or social economic groups? You'll also include information about the onset of the disorder. Um, how does it start out? Is it start out gradually or suddenly? Uh, is there an age at which it most commonly begins manifesting? Uh, that sort of information, as well as the course of the disorder. Is it typically something that is constant and ongoing, what we might call chronic? Or is it something that is uh, remitting? In other words, it comes and goes. 
something that recurs uh, from time to time? Is it something that's permanent, temporary? Um, then we'll also list causes and risk factors. Uh, what is known about what might cause that disorder or become a risk factor for it? Are there certain biological causes, like maybe uh, certain uh, genetic um, abnormalities? Or uh, are there other biological causes, like uh, maybe uh, damage to the nervous system or something? Are there potentially some psychological risk factors like maybe experiencing a phenomenon like learned helplessness that we uh, talked about at class? Are there potentially maybe some cognitive causes or risk factors? Maybe certain ways of thinking about things or certain perceptions or types of attributions. Are there maybe some social uh, risk factors, maybe being isolated or maybe uh, being subject to abuse by others? Or are there some environmental uh, causes or risk factors, things in the person's environment? Are there certain experiences that might predispose people to develop that disorder, like maybe exposure to certain traumas or something? And then in addition to that, uh, any other facts that you care to include, should there be enough room on your poster? The appearance of the poster then uh, should be pleasant and orderly. That'll help others to attend to and remember important facts. So make sure your poster is, first of all, visible. Classmates should be able to read that from the third row of seats at least. Uh, it should also be organized. Present that information in an orderly way. Group things into categories. Uh, use hierarchies. Use headings to set off uh, differing information. The headings should be larger or highlighted. Your po poster also should be aesthetic. In other words, pleasing to the eye. So illustrations, artwork can be helpful, using color and arrangement to make it an enjoyable experience to look at that and learn from it. And the uh, poster should be digestible. In other words, it shouldn't be so wordy that people can't take it all in. So use, again, keywords and phrases, not sentences. Your poster also should be memorable. Highlight a picture or a phrase that will help serve as a retrieval cue to help your classmates remember that disorder later on. Your, your poster also can be creative. Your classmates may enjoy a novel, clever approach to presenting that information, but in being creative, make sure you don't satis sacrifice the other qualities above just to be creative. Make sure that those things are also uh, taken care of. Once again, on your poster, you should make sure not to include the name of that disorder. Uh, make sure to keep people in the dark so that they can try to disorder, uh, dis they can try to identify the disorder you're describing. The next part of the um, assignment then is to give a brief talk that will elaborate on the poster. You should figure on about five minutes in length, give or take, so not very long. Your talk should be audible. People should be able to hear you. And you should speak clearly, not too fast or too slow, while maintaining eye contact with the audience in order to communicate with them more fully. That means you're going to need to know your talk relatively well. Your talk then should coincide with the information on your poster, should match up with it, and also elaborate and give the details of what you find on your poster. You also will be producing a poster session handout. Your handout will sum up the information that you just gave in your talk on your poster, again in an organized and easily reviewable way. Of course, it will need to be typewritten. You'll give one of these to each of your classmates and one to me, your instructor. Those will be handy then for other people to review uh, the various disorders. 
Make sure you make enough of them for everybody. It's quite likely, though, that you can probably fit your handout uh, on a half sheet of paper, and that way you can actually make two per sheet of paper. The last part of the assignment, then, is you will be identifying the mystery disorders being presented by your classmates. So based on your reading of the textbook and other materials that I make available to you, uh, including uh, other little videos that I'll put up on, um, on Blackboard, um, you'll be able to uh, already be informed about those. And when you hear the descriptions from your classmates, you should be able to readily identify those disorders. So there you go. That's the assignment. Um, if you have any questions, which I'm sure you will, make sure to ask me at class or uh, come by my office, call, send me an email. Uh, make sure to ask the questions rather than guessing. It can save you a lot of time and a lot of uh, heartache by just asking. So there it is. Um, let me know if you have any questions.